hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so we'll continue our discussion with uh, satellite communication systems so so far uh, we have discussed some basic concepts related to orbital mechanics uh, about uh, the forces acting on satellite the velocity of the satellite the time period the orbital time period and also about uh, kepler's three laws of planetary motion so in this video, we will uh, have a very uh, basic discussion related to orbital parameters. Okay, these are various uh, terms and notations, uh, terminologies that are used for uh, pinpointing or locating satellite at various positions in its orbital path. Okay, so there are various uh, a number of orbital parameters, uh, uh, I think seven or eight orbital parameters and uh, each ha is a new concept in itself. So we'll be discussing them. So this video will be a very uh, basic introduction to orbital parameters. Okay, so the satellite orbit, the path taken by satellite around uh, any planet or earth and uh, the position of the satellite they are characterized by a number of parameters number of terms so they actually you know specify the in a way the geometric characteristics of the orbit and the position the orientation of the satellite orbit and also the satellite the position of the satellite with respect to earth which is very important in satellite communication system so we need to know where the satellite exactly is so that we can establish a communication with it okay the, ra the radar antenna will be pointed in that direction in terms of its uh, angle of orientation its elevation its azimuth all of the those things so there are a number of orbital parameters that are required to specify the position of the satellite in space so that's where orbital parameters come into play so the basic orbital parameters that are used to specify the position of a satellite these are just to name a few there are many others for example there are many others i'm say eight nine or ten orbital parameters which we'll, we'll discuss so there are a number of things come into play for example ascending and descending nodes also terms uh, such as equinoxes, solstices, apogee, perigee, eccentricity, semi-major, semi-minor axis, inclination angle, elevation angle, azimuth angle, then uh, right ascension of node, then the true value of satellite position. There are a lot of other orbital parameters which we'll discuss one by one. Okay, so before we discuss these orbital parameters, we must uh, have a very good understanding of some other related concepts such as the orbital plane now we know that the satellite it uh, orbits or moves around a planet in a particular orbital path it can be circular or elliptical so as the satellite moves the it forms a plane which passes through earth's center called as geocenter and that is called as the orbital plane Okay, this highlighted or shaded portion in grey that is the orbital plane formed by the orbital path by the satellite and it exactly passes through the center of the earth okay which is called as geocenter so this is the orbital plane another thing which is important is the equatorial plane so this plane passes through earth's equatorial line okay the equatorial line this this line the plane passing through this which is something like this the equatorial plane so this is the orbital plane this is the equatorial plane so you can also visualize it something like this okay this is earth the orbital plane which is the plane formed by the satellites orbit okay like this and this is the equatorial plane passing through the center of the earth dividing the earth into two equal halves the equator the as in the equator and this is the geocenter 
then we have the top portion called as the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere okay and this is the geocenter the center of the earth now here we'll discuss one of the orbital parameters which is the ascending and descending nodes okay ascending and descending nodes so here both uh, the uh, not the uh, the equatorial plane actually will come into play now we know that the satellite it moves around earth in a particular orbital path it can be elliptical it can be circular now it makes contact with the equatorial plane okay the equatorial plane is the plane passing through the center of the earth through the equatorial line dividing earth into two equal halves okay this equatorial plane this is the equatorial plane so the satellite orbit makes contact or it cuts the equatorial plane at two points okay two points these are called as the ascending and descending node okay one is called as the ascending node one is called as the descending node so the descending node is the one where the satellite it just passes or it crosses from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere okay it makes transition from the northern hemisphere to the southern hemisphere that is called as the descending node you know this equator it divides earth into two equal halves the northern hemisphere the southern hemisphere so the descending node is the one where the satellite orbit cuts the equatorial plane such that the satellite makes its transition just from the northern hemisphere to the southern southern hemisphere it just crosses the equator the equatorial line and moves from northern hemisphere to southern hemisphere that is the descending node okay descending node because we can say it is moving downwards not to south ascending node is just the opposite so it is that point of contact of the satellite orbit with the equatorial plane where it moves or it crosses the equator such that it moves from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere that is the ascending node it is upwards that's why ascending so these are the two points of contact of the satellite orbit with the equatorial plane one where it moves from north to south uh, north to south northern to southern hemisphere that is the descending node that point of contact and the next point of contact is where it makes transition or movement from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere that is the ascending node so equatorial plane satellite orbit two points of contact one from north to south descending one from south to north ascending okay so this is the ascending and descending nodes okay so we discussed about uh, the basic orbital parameters and also about the ascending and descending nodes so now we'll discuss about some uh, other orbital parameters uh, so we'll be discussing about apogee perigee eccentricity semi major and semi minor axis so all of this is related to the position or location of this satellite uh, and various positions in the orbit and the key positions which are of you know significance importance in satellite communication okay so apogee and perigee so apogee and perigee comes into play when the satellite is in an elliptical orbit okay this is not applicable for circular orbit so for elliptical orbit two positions are of very much importance okay the apogee and perigee now we know that uh, <coughs> as per Kep kepler's uh, first law the path taken by a satellite around a planet is in the form of ellipse and the center of the earth lies in one of the two focal points okay so this is an elliptical path center of the earth or the earth lies in one of the 
two focal points. So two points positions of the satellite are of key, you know, importance here. So apogee is the maximum distance of the satellite from Earth's center. Okay. So let's say the Earth's center is located at the first focal point. So the maximum separation distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth or from the surface of the Earth Basically, it is the geocenter which is considered for uh, uh, measurement purposes. So, the maximum distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth that is called as apogee. Okay, and perigee is the minimum separation distance of the satellite from the center of the Earth. This this distance is perigee. Okay, so apogee is the maximum distance. Perigee is the minimum distance. Now, also here there are other important parameters that are involved here, which is semi major, semi minor axis, and eccentricity. So, this the center of the ellipse here, this maximum distance, okay, the maximum separation from one extreme to the other of the ellipse that is called as the major axis and one half of that that is called as the semi major axis and it is represented by small a this smaller separation okay the smaller of the two separation between the extreme points this is called as the minor axis this is the major axis the maximum distance this is the smaller distance that is called as the minor axis now one half of that represented by small b that is called as the semi minor axis so one half of the maximum distance semi major axis one half of the minimum distance semi minor axis this is represented by small a semi major axis from here to here or from here to here these are two equal small a which is called as semi major axis and this from here to here small b or from here to here small b that is called as the semi minor axis and these are the two focal points from at which the earth's center will be located as per kepler's law so from the semi major and semi minor axis we can determine another parameter which is called as eccentricity so eccentricity and semi major axis and semi minor axis there are two important orbital parameters when it comes to uh, transmission and reception of signals various forms of uh, satellite communication which will come into play in the future in the future discussions where we'll be using these terms the mathematical expressions will be dependent on these terms so at that time you will not be confused what is eccentricity what is semi major axis what is semi minor axis what is the focal point so for that i am uh, making you understand these things beforehand okay so eccentricity uh, it is calculated from the semi major and semi minor axis so it is given by root over of a square minus b square by a that is eccentricity so the circular orbit is actually a special case of elliptical orbit so when this this eccentricity it lies in between 0 and 1 we have an elliptical orbit elliptical shape orbit of different you know shape different size and when eccentricity becomes zero eccentricity is zero it means a is equal to b and that means the orbit is circular okay orbit is circular when a is equal to b it means it is a circular orbit a equals to b equals to r which is the radius so this is about eccentricity semi major and semi minor axis then we can also uh, represent apogee and perigee distance in terms of eccentricity and semi major axis so they are interrelated as the apogee the maximum distance which is this maximum separation it can be represented as mathematically as a into 1 plus e where a is the semi major axis e is the eccentricity perigee can be represented as a into 1 minus e these are for calculation purpose uh, shortcut calculations when it will be required then 
another way is uh, the semi major axis can be represented as apogee plus perigee by 2 eccentricity can be represented as apogee minus perigee by 2a okay so this is the orbital parameters apogee perigee semi major semi minor axis eccentricity and representation the interrelation between them so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much